is Wednesday, September 30th, 2020, and welcome to another edition of Wildcat Weekly. Hi, everybody. I'm your host, Bill Krause. We thank you all for joining us on this special edition here as it is Wildcat Spirit Week all week on campus here in Amherst, New York. If you've been with us on the show since episode one, we thank you all for taking the ride with us this semester. And this is the first time you have tuned in to our show Thanks for tuning in. This is what our program is all about. And every week we'll be joined by a Damon College head coach or player to discuss their upcoming season, their past success with the Wildcats, and what it's meant to be part of the Damon College community. We're also on social media. Follow us on Twitter at Damon Athletics. Like our Facebook page, Damon College Athletics, and visit our website at DamonWildcats.com. Our guest tonight is a rising star in the college volleyball landscape and has dominated at every level, starting with her days as a student athlete and is now entering her fifth season with the Wildcats here on Main Street. The Wildcats are also prepping for their second East Coast Conference title run since she took over the program. And hopefully this team, well, they're fired up to play. They're ready to go starting hopefully in January. So fingers crossed and we discuss all of this and more with Demon Women's Volleyball Head Coach, Steph Albano. Hey, we're here with Steph Albano, Demon Women's Volleyball Head Coach. Steph, thanks for joining us today at Wildcat Weekly. I guess just to start off, how would you describe the past few weeks and months? Um, you know, your mind is thinking this is volleyball season, but unfortunately we don't have volleyball season going on right now. Yeah, it's been really slow. I think when everything first happened, it was really nice for me um, just to hit that pause button. I have two small kids. There might be background noise from them um, throughout this. And so not traveling and kind of taking a pause, like that was really nice. But now, you know, it's lasted six months and we're like ready to go. Um, so it's been slow all the way around, even in our gym when we could do the first two weeks of just individual work, no sharing balls. Um, this week we're starting to do partner stuff, but a lot of it's like the antithesis of volleyball because you have six other people that you're coordinating with and you can't do a skill by yourself without someone else touching the ball. And also like an antithesis of the team because everyone's divided into pods. So just navigating through these new challenges, but I'm just excited to be back on campus with the team and be in the gym. You mentioned about those pods. How has the morale of the team been so far, considering, like you mentioned too, you really can't do a full practice yet, but it's slowly getting there. Yeah, I think everyone's just happy and to be on back campus. In the gym. So I think have the opportunity to just to be with each other. We're, we're doing really well. It's just different and odd in terms of not having everybody there on the team. So there's some people on our team that haven't seen other people at all because they're not in the same pod or in the same lift group. We've tried to do some different things for team bonding that's been safe and physically distanced. So I had the whole team over to my house and I set up chairs like 10 feet apart in the backyard and we had food and then we went through our team binders and then everyone designed an about me board. So they went up and talked a little bit about themselves. So that way our newcomers can meet some of our returners in a physically present area. So that was nice. Definitely. And I think I heard you guys are, are doing some yoga techniques as well so far. Yeah, we, I, I like yoga a lot. I think it's really great in terms of just breathing and stretching and, you know, I enjoy doing it and I think it's very beneficial for our student athletes and for recovery. So we are doing something this Saturday outside with the head men's volleyball coach, his twin sister is running a session for us um, outside. So that should be really fun. Definitely, definitely. Hopefully good weather, too, uh, this weekend. Not as nice as this past weekend. It was like 80 degrees. I know, right? It was so great. So great. And, you know, you've had a lot of great success the past couple of years with Damon. Um, you know, two years ago, you, you won the conference quite all last year. Uh, you know, finished third in, in the conference. Um, I guess, what were your thoughts on how last season and even the past couple of years, because Damon has gotten a lot of attention on the college volleyball circuit now. Yeah, I think we've we've done a pretty good job of establishing ourselves as a conference contender every year. Doesn't always happen every year. Uh, last year for us was, I mean, we had a winning record and we did finish third, but in a lot of ways we didn't reach our goals and we lost a lot of 
five set matches to teams that made it to the Elite Eight um, and two teams that made it to the NCAA tournament. So if we would have won one of those matches, I think it kind of flips our season around and the momentum, but we just weren't able to pull it off. So that was slightly disappointing. But I think from that experience, there's a lot to be learned from that. I'm excited about the team that we have moving forward. There's a lot of returners. We added some new pieces. That'll be great. So I think that we're poised to continue to compete for championships. You're yeah, joined by Seth Obano today at Wildcat Weekly. And your team, you just met a lot of veteran returnees. I think I read five seniors coming back for this year. Um, right. We have, you know, Tears of Peters, Allison Post, Haley Greenwood, uh, Georgia Wicker, Jen Hurts, and you add in again Sam Logan, Hannah McKee, and so many others. I guess considering because things have been kind of um, off the rails this off season and the start of this season, how critical has it been so far the first couple of weeks having those veterans, you know, kind of being the extra set of eyes and, and leading these um, younger players so far? Yeah, this is the first season where I've had five seniors. Usually it's one or two. So it's it's a huge difference maker when you have that many upperclassmen because they know your system, they know the program, they know the expectation levels of myself, and they can help the underclassmen navigate through any challenges that they might have. So I think we're really fortunate that we have a really great crew of upperclassmen that have done it before, and they're also just great people, and they want – the underclassmen to figure it out too and they know how they felt in in certain situations so uh, we're very um fortunate to have such a large and great class and i guess they have that post season experience as well right being a part of that team two years ago is that kind of been helpful too knowing that they've been in these kind of situations before absolutely and i think even in the situation last year where we didn't do as well as we wanted to, like that makes you even more hungry to come out and to continue to get better and to figure out how everyone can come together and be a part of the best team possible. So it's it's been really great. Now besides coaching volleyball, you've spent a lot of time um, in recent years, kind of, I mean, just focusing on mental health training, which is probably even more so important now considering where we're at in the world right now. Um, I mean, you, there's a really good quote that you sent me, you know, be where your feet are. Um, I guess what inspired you to, to study this more and how has this helped your coaching especially? Yeah, I, I love that because a lot of times it's, there's so many distractions and you can be thinking about all these other things, but if you're doing that and you're not where your feet are and your mind isn't where your feet are, then you're losing out on really getting better and reaching your full potential in any capacity. It doesn't matter where you are. So for me, I think it, in a way it was kind of, personal because this whole like cell phone thing I just watched um, the social dilemma on Netflix last night but I think for me I, I was really good at being where my feet are like throughout high school and college and then cell phone entered my life and it, it made it really challenging just to to not be distracted and not be divided so we talk a lot about that and and we do I have an app called calm so on Mondays we do mindful Mondays and there's a meditation geared towards college age kids. So we've been starting to do that every Monday so they can just practice breathing and self-awareness and where their thoughts are going to help them bring it back home quicker. You just mentioned about the social dilemma uh, documentary on Netflix. I was gonna ask you that. Um, I guess if you, were, if you were in high school and college now, um, do you think your trajectory of where you'd be right now would be would be completely different because I mean you you mentioned before that you know cell phones have kind of had you know an interesting impact on on kids today. Yeah I don't I don't really know. Facebook started in 2004 right before I was going to college but how it started is so different from from what it's become and what social media has become and I don't really have that many at, like I do Facebook Facebook sometimes, but I don't even have the app, Instagram and Twitter. And a lot of it is more so for Damon women's volleyball than rather myself. Um, I'm more addicted, I think, to like email and responding immediately. Um, and it's hard to turn it off, right? Because you're always expected to be on or should I be doing something? And, and I think it kind of hits nail on the head in that documentary about it's addictive. It's like the casino. Like, do I have a message? Like, does someone need me for something, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, let me answer this right away. And it's, it's absolutely true. So I think it's just, if 
finding what works for you and, and knowing that it's okay to like, just kind of go off the grid and it's okay not to be doing anything. And that recovery time for yourself matters. And of course, I mean, what was space, was my space kind of the, the big thing back in the day? Probably. I didn't use my space. <laughs> we had dial up and I mean, I'm in a weird, I was born in 87, but we had dial up internet at my house. Like I didn't even have texting in college because my dad didn't want to pay for it. And I had to convince him that my coach was starting to text the team and I was missing messages. Um, so I was brought up a little bit differently in, in the introduction of the internet and the computer even. Yeah, that's, I mean, I still have the phone on the wall too. So, I mean, nice. it's been definitely crazy. Um, do you have, and you, you mentioned you've read a lot of different books and, um, I mean, have you, do you have any recommendations for coaches um, on where to start reading or listening wise that they want to try to get into this, this mental health training that, that you, that you've taken on? I guess it's fair to say a hobby. Is that, is that fair to say for your experience? Yeah, I think so. Cause I, I mean, I guess for me, like learning is a hobby and just tackling different topics. And I, and I noticed just in coaching with a lot of the young student athletes, just a lot of anxiety and overwhelmness and how they're dealing with pressure. And for me, I'm like, okay, like this is happening. I want to understand it better. Like, why is this happening? And then maybe I can relate better to them in the situation, have more empathy. So that's, that's where I started. I read a really good book um, called The Coddling of the American Mind. So I would recommend that to everybody at first you know, I'm like, this is just going to justify everything I think, right? Like, hoorah. So I didn't want to read it, <laughs> but I read it and they do a really great job of backing up with research as to like why things are happening to young adults now um, and kind of framing the story. So I think, and making you understand like why things are happening or why people might be reacting in a certain way. And sometimes, I mean, it's in a way, no fault of their own. It's just like the society that we're in. So trying to like figure out and navigate that puzzle right and I mean I'm guessing it's kind of a feeling when you do read something and it's like this is what I was saying the other day to my players I mean it, I'm guessing it's probably a good feeling yeah for sure I just I just want to I want to be relevant to what people are going through and I think that's important as a coach that you're always growing and learning like I have continued to have a lot to learn and I enjoy learning and, and getting better you mentioned uh, the last time, um, a few weeks ago, that you met Samantha Livingston. Um, and in case those watching don't know, she's a, a 2000 Olympic gold medalist in swimming. Um, you can probably find her clips on YouTube. But she came, um, you saw her speak a few weeks ago or a few months ago now. Um, and she really explained the WAI, the whole athlete initiative, WAI. Um, I guess what does that entail? Um, and, and how, has it been, you know, even more helpful to use now during, during these hectic times? For sure. So in my quest to learn and grow, my husband teaches at Orchard Park High School and they brought in Samantha Livingstone, the swim club brought her in and he was telling me a little bit about her and the topics she was going to be tackling. And I'm like, holy cow, I'm not recruiting. <laughs> it was in February. I'm like, this sounds really cool. Like I want to come too. So I went and She's a Olympic gold medalist and she shared her story around the anxiety and um, some eating disorders and some mental health issues that she dealt with like as a swimmer growing up and how she had to navigate that and what she's doing now to posit positively stress and cope with those situations. So the way she delivered her story and how she delivered it was really amazing. So of course, afterwards, I just went up to her really quick and introduced myself and we made a connection and we started talking about how we could potentially help student athletes here at Damon. So that has turned into this um, whole athlete initiative, which she runs uh, as a programming. So she does programming for teams and then also individuals. So we haven't started that yet. Um, next week, she's gonna be meeting with Student Athlete Advisory Committee, our SAC virtually, just to learn more about the students at Damon and what they're going through and what they need. And then she's also gonna chat with coaches before kicking it off. And it's a holistic approach to the, to the student athlete and, and giving them tools to develop and strengthen their, their coping skills so they can positively handle stress and pressure and all those other hard things. So I think that's important 
you know, sometimes it's okay to like be in that moment to be stuck, but like, how are you going to help get yourself out of that positively? And that's what the programming is designed to do through a virtual team app at Demon. You mentioned already about social media hurdle, but has there ever been, you know, thinking back about your career at, you know, at Lancaster High School and UNC Chapel Hill, um, has there ever been maybe any kind of struggle um, when you were a student athlete that has maybe still been lingering around and, or maybe hasn't really got enough attention still? Um, it's hard to say. I don't, I don't know. I, I honestly, like myself, like I just always dealt with, this is my daughter, Mackenzie. Hi, Mackenzie. So I've, I've always dealt with things like had pretty like high like mental toughness skills and just what I've developed in resiliency. So a lot of it, I think maybe for me was a little bit out of sight, out of mind. So I think that's why even more so I've been more apt to like learn about it because I've had a better time dealing with things positively um, through all the coaching that I've received throughout my life and my parents. So I think that definitely helped. Um, but I don't know. There, I think just stopping the stigma in general, like it's okay to like talk about things and figure, figure things out. Like there's, there shouldn't be shame with that. Sorry, Joe. Oh, that's okay. Uh, I mean, I guess, uh, you know, one of the, one of the big things you're also doing stuff is, is the DC World Lead Academy. Um, it's really huge. I know it's, I think it's only, this is going to be only the second year with the program, but um, what's the the overall, I know things are hectic, Kind of limited now, but what's the overall vision you're trying to trying to establish with uh, DC Will Lee? Yeah, so we started it last year. Last year was kind of getting it off the ground just to have leadership development programming for all of our student athletes. So I know that a lot of coaches do things on their own, which is amazing. And I also think that it's important to have like an overarching leadership programming for all of our student athletes. Um, so that way they can even work with each other peer to peer, talk about their struggles, and they're all learning the same things. So last year was a little bit messy trying to figure out what will work best. And this year, how we've structured it, it's two levels. So level two is you're nominated by your coach. So a lot of times it's the captains of the team, those that want to develop their leadership skills, and we're doing three in-person workshops. And we had our first in-person workshop this past Sunday. So we did that, and we talked a little bit about mindset and what's your personal leadership philosophy what are some good traits of a leader and we talked to a little bit about what are they struggling with right now because they are so divided like as a captain um, all the teams are in pods so how are you handling that how have you been reaching out to people that you don't see that kind of thing it, it definitely i mean you mentioned about the team divided pods i'm gonna get probably one captain maybe two per pod and just trying to figure it out from there um, we mentioned earlier about, um, you know, this year's team, a lot of veteran attorneys. Um, are there any players that maybe we should keep an eye on as, as fans heading into this, hopefully, um, upcoming season? Yeah, we, we've added four players to our roster, five, um, including Jordan, who transferred last spring. So I think just all the newcomers will be someone to keep an eye on. Uh, Maggie. Burns. She came from Urbana. Unfortunately, Urbana closed down um, last spring, so she needed a new home, and she was the rookie of the year for her conference, and she's been doing some really nice things in the gym. And then from a freshman standpoint, we have two freshmen from the Illinois area. Dunya, who's setting, has been doing some nice things. Vanessa is a middle, and then Jasmine's local from this area. She comes from St. Mary's, which is a great high school program, and She's been doing some nice things on serve receive. So I think all four of them plus Jordan will contribute in the spring when we get there. And I think we can expect good things out of them. Definitely. And I guess just lastly, I mean, hopefully, um, you know, I, I want to see your team play. I know you're right. You're itching to coach um, like a lot of the other coaches around here as well. Um, but what is maybe your final message to the Demon fan base as we, as we, push through this, I guess, quote unquote, snowstorm um, and, and just keep on going and get ready for the spring. I think that once sports are back, like let's come watch. Our team's going to be exciting to watch. Here's my son, Hudson, who has to go to the bathroom. <laughs>
<laughs> so I'm going to have to pop off, but I think that will be an exciting team to watch and the girls are great and we hope the community can come out and support. So thanks for your time. and uh, right, we'll thanks, Joe. Appreciate it. A big thanks to Steph Albano from Demon Women's Volleyball for joining us today on Wildcat Weekly. And that will do it for our show. You can follow us anytime, anywhere on all of our social media platforms. On Twitter at Demon Athletics, like the Facebook page, Demon College Athletics, and visit us online at DemonWildcat.com. We have a lot of great content coming to you for the rest of the semester. Until next time, I'm your host, Joe Krause. Thanks again for watching, and as always, go Wildcat!